Greetings, it's the disheveled one back with my corona hair, minus the tea cosy hat, which I was cyber bullied over. Thanks, mate. Re VR. Uh, I've had numerous discussions with people in the industry recently about their future plans with regards to VR, what they're doing with sales presentations in the future, and how they want to leverage VR moving forward. Understandably, quite a few people just think and assume re quite reasonably as well that they should just be able to buy an Oculus Quest 2 uh, and just use their CAD data with it. And when I say CAD data, I'm generalizing by meaning Revit models or Inventor models or AutoCAD drones or even SolidWorks, stuff, any, any, anything, right? CAD data. They should just be able to open it up in this and view it on a Quest 2, right? Because it's, it's a very popular headset. It's untethered. It should just work. I guess the assumption is it's so popular, someone's probably thought of it and taken care of it, and it should be pretty easy. I'm afraid not uh, for, for numerous reasons, but the chief amongst those being... Uh, the core of it, this is this is really a mobile phone when you think about it. It's got an Android operating system on it, uh, storage in, in built into it, and a system on a chip. There's no installer for your CAD programs to open the files with, right? You can't just drag and drop your CAD models onto this and open them up. Open them in what? You know, open them up on what program? There isn't an installer to open your models on this. The next reason is probably the just as important, and that would be the performance of the data uh, everything that runs on here, the graphics performance of this is superbly impressive. It really is. But all of the games and experiences that run on the Quest 2 have been optimized for this Snapdragon XR2 system on a chip. CAD data hasn't been, right? There's so many polygons and triangles in CAD data, and it consumes so much RAM and all the all the, the metadata and all the relationships in native CAD data. This can't cope with that. There'd need to be extensive optimizations made to the CAD data for it to just open up natively in this. And nobody's prepared to make that kind of a, an automation, not for the market that's going to be wanting to, to do it. So, yeah, that's why you can't just do it. And I don't think you'll be able to, really. Uh, but there's a way. There, there is a way to still design in VR and present in VR using other techniques. And I'm going to show you one of them today. It's using a conduit called virtual desktop. Now, virtual desktop is nothing new. It's the, the workflow that I'm going to show you. Someone else would have thought of it. It's nothing like it's nothing special. It's not like a super secret. But virtual desktop has a streamer app, which allows you to stream your desktop PC to the Oculus Quest 2. People are using it for gaming, and it makes the Quest 2 cable-free for their desktop VR games. We can use the same technique to stream your CAD VR experiences to the Quest 2. Uh, you have to pay $14-ish for virtual desktop. Mate, it's absolutely worth it. It's perfectly credible and well-respected. Uh, that's not an issue. But once you get that, it opens up a world of opportunities with regards to VR visualizations and CAD data. The CAD program I'm going to use is Autodesk Create VR. You can use any, though, whether it be Keyshot VR, whether it be Autodesk VRED. Anything that's got a Steam VR or an Oculus Link connector will be able to do this. But alias was previously the only application that had access to Create VR, but as Autodesk are currently rolling out the 2022 platform, they've enabled Create VR into Maya 2022, which opens up this Create VR program into a massively bigger demographic. So I think this is going to be quite, I think a lot of those people will have a Quest 2. So yeah, if you're interested in doing a bit of VR design work, a bit of conceptual design work in your Quest 2 and you don't want to be tripping over a cable, mate, then this is how you go about doing it. We made to get the process started, you need to go to your Oculus app on your phone or go into VR Home within the Quest 2, search for virtual desktop, buy it and then install it. If you don't fancy buying it, mate, you might as well stop here because you can't kind of do what I'm about to show you unless you go and get a virtual desktop. So go to the Oculus store, search. Uh, I know it's rude to be on my phone, but I kind of have to and then go for virtual desktop. There it is. I've already bought it and I've already installed it. I'm sure you're well familiar at this point with how to search for apps, install them onto your Quest 2. Do that, and then we'll take it from there, mate. Right, mate, once you've done that, you need to head over to your web browser of choice, uh, whether it be Chrome, Edge, whatever, and do a search for virtual desktop streamer, and then that'll take you to uh, vrdesktop.net, which is the main page for virtual desktop. Download their streamer app, which will take over oh, two shakes of a lamb's tail, Install it. Once it's finished installing, open up the streamer app. Do a window search for virtual desktop streamer app, and then that'll show you this. So this is the streamer app, and this is on the PC that you're connecting. Well, you don't connect your Oculus Quest 2 to it, but it's your main desktop PC. It's the one that your CAD applications are installed on. Uh, this is not a tutorial for virtual desktop, but the settings are pretty self-explanatory in here. By all means, just copy the settings that I've got, but I'd highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with the settings in here because each 
do their own unique and individual things that you might need to know about later on if things don't behave in the way that you so desire for your delectation and delight. Reet, once that's done, we'll move on to the next bit. All right, once you've got that done, mount your Oculus Quest 2, jump into the wonderful world of virtual reality. Then what you need to do is go into apps and then you'll see virtual desktop in here. So you want to open a virtual desktop, All right? Once you're in the virtual desktop app, you should see uh, the, the whole Galaxy thing up the top. You should see a, a monitor with a virtual desktop uh, panel here. Providing everything has gone to plan and there's no network issues on your local network, you're, you should see your computer named here with uh, connected underneath it. If that hasn't happened, I'm afraid you're kind of on your own there. You'll have to look it up and figure out what's potentially gone wrong. But the Quest 2 should connect to the streamer app on your PC over the network automatically. Uh, this connect thing here is an automatic thing that happens. Right, mate, the next bit is kind of the clever bit. Well, the, the bit that you need to do which makes this all happen. Yes, the Quest 2 is connected to your desktop right now via the streamer app, but Create VR or the CAD applications that you want to connect to the Quest 2 still won't work because they don't detect the Quest 2 through virtual desktop yet. They still don't see it. So what you've got to do is connect your Quest 2 to Steam VR, and the best and the easiest way to do that is to go into your Steam library, load a game or a, an application that just runs in the background. Now, the one that I use is FPS VR. FPS VR basically puts like a little panel on the bottom of the controller that shows me what the current stats of VR is, what the frame rate is, and that's it. So now my Quest 2 is now connected to Steam VR. You can see I'm now in the Steam VR environment. If I open up Steam VR, you'll see the Quest 2 and its controllers in the Steam VR panel. That's now added this into Steam VR and it'll allow Create VR and any other car application to make that connection to the Quest 2. So once that's done, we'll head on over to Maya and we'll fire up Create VR. Right, so if I head on over to my desktop, you'll see there, there's Steam VR. Steam VR now recognizes the Quest 2 and its two controllers. So what I'm going to do is open up Maya, and you absolutely need to do this whilst the Quest 2 is connected to Steam VR and the, using the previous steps. You also need to have installed Create VR uh, off of the Autodesk App Store. Rant incoming. Autodesk, what the hell are you doing? Why have you put Create VR on your App Store? That derelict, desolate, barren wasteland known as your App Store. You've got this desktop app. People have installed Maya. What is even the point of this desktop app when you've got extensions of your applications siphoned off onto derelict barren websites that nobody knows even exist? Come on, man. Put Create VR in here. All of Revit's extensions are in here. Put it here, for God's sake, man. Absolute. This is why people just like, look at you guys and go, don't know what you're doing, where things are. It's a complete confused mess. Sorry, I ran over, but just put it in here for the love of God. Anyway, if you want to create VR, you do have to go to the App Store. Uh, when I first installed Create VR, it didn't load itself into Maya. What I had to do was go into Windows, Settings, Plugin Manager, and then I had to scroll all the way down to get to the Maya Create VR plugin, which is this one here, and I had to tick load it, and it didn't load itself in. It took me three hours to figure that out. I'm, I, I don't know Maya. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going on. But once I did that, uh, the Create VR menu fired up, and there it is. There's Create VR. And now that Steam VR recognizes my headset, Create VR will use this link to power my Quest 2. Finally in, you'll notice my tires changed. The tea cozy's back. It's a different day. Uh, recording issues occurred. Never mind, right? That workflow that I went through just earlier with connecting the FPS panel to get the connection. Sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you don't. But once you know, you know. If, when you click the Create VR, like VR connector in Maya, sometimes it'll just connect to Steam VR and fire up. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit hit and miss, but if it doesn't, you just follow that workflow that I just did uh, and it'll work. So but yeah, once you know, you know. Reet, we're in. And aren't we in, mate? Untethered, completely cable-free, designing in VR. And look at the canvas that you've got to just walk around and be free. I've, I, I'm not blessed with this much space. I can't just walk around this canvas. But, you know, if you, if you have that much space, wow. Think, think if you had that kind of floor space to just walk around and design. You could do that without cable now. It's, that's, that's exciting. You've got to admit, that's exciting. But 
Let's address the, the the elephant in the room, the fact that there's two Vive controllers in front of my face. Right, Autodesk, you, you kind of do need to sort that out. It's mapped the wrong controller models in. I'm hoping that Create VR hasn't just looked at the fact that we're using a Steam VR connector and gone, oh, Steam VR, that means you're using an HTC Vive because it's still 2016 and there's only one headset that uses Steam VR. Mate, Steam VR is kind of like, it's based on the, it's open VR. There's so many different headsets that now utilize Steam VR. It's not just the HTC Vive anymore, right? The Index uses Steam VR. I would expect in, to see Index controllers or Reverb controllers, right? But the Oculus Quest or Rift can also pipe through Steam VR. So you, and it did, right? You saw the fact that my Quest Two was shown as an as a device in Steam VR. So you need to bring through the right controller models. Fortunately, though, it works. Right, trigger brings up the menu. That works. I can now select things and trigger will create entities. And then the grip buttons will let me scale things up. Right grip will let me move things around. Uh, and it, oh, doesn't it look beautiful though? Look at the blue hue, the blue hue off of the, like the metallic anodized surfaces really shines and glows against the lenses in VR. It looks beautiful. And then the angelic glow on the vertices and the, the triad, the axes, it looks so good. It squiggles, the glow and squiggles, like a little electrical element that runs along the patches. It's so satisfying to be in. Oh, microphone. Uh, <laughs> thumping the microphone so I can't see it. But yeah, that's so, so satisfying. Oh, it just makes you wish that you were a talented product designer, which I am absolutely not in any stretch or form. But there you go. That's that's working all good and, all good and proper. Right, the trackpad's probably the worst of this because on the Vive controllers, it's a thumb swipe so a touch sensitive trackpad, you don't have that on the Quest, you've got a joystick. So you've got to use the joystick, which does replicate the trackpad. Fortunately, I, I assume that's entirely accidental that that's working, but it does work, right? And then the left hand one will let you move the joystick to the left and then press down and that will undo. So fortunately, it works. Uh, these don't though, these shortcuts, there's nothing I can actually do with these. I click and down on that doesn't actually do anything. So those shortcuts don't really work. Uh, and then the two Vive buttons there and there, they won't really do anything, but I don't think they actually do in Creative VR, Creative VR anyway. But the spindle selector works as well. You can move that up and down and make that bigger and smaller. So the rest of it works. If I was handing this over to an employee and saying, right, there's your design tool, just get over the fact that the controllers are different to what you've got in your hand, I wouldn't be great about that. But if it's you, you can compromise and get over that. But yeah, bringing in things like reference geometry as well, what an application this is, right? Like I can go to import geometry uh, and then bring in an FBX file. Look how fast this is. It's so, it's so quick. And then look at the performance we're getting out of this. This is a pretty high poly BMW M4 G82 FBX file. And I'm just throwing it around like it's nothing. And I'm still getting 72 frames per second as I'm chucking this around. Complete native over oh, native frame rate over Wi-Fi streaming. This is really impressive. It genuinely is impressive. I haven't seen another modeling or model handling application that's able to kind of cope with a model like this, but this is doing a really good job. Just chucking it around. And then, so obviously this is reference geometry. It hasn't come in with textures. It's not supposed to, it's not, a, this is not a visualization application. So the glass is not supposed to look like glass. It's not mapping in textures and materials. It is supposed to be for a blueprint. So you can, you know, say if you were a guy modeling a new design for exhaust tips, you bring in the reference and then you can start, you know, modeling up your, your new design for your exhaust tips and then do whatever you need to do and model off, off you go. I wish I could. Uh, I wish I was that talent, but my talents lie elsewhere. But uh, there you go. And then once you've done your modeling, you can then export that. You've got your tools at the top for exporting your designs back into Maya and then use them downstream. It's not just a gimmicky mess about in VR and then that's where it stays type of a tool. Now you can actually push this out and then use it elsewhere. Uh, the environments, this one's probably the one I'd stay in. Uh, the, uh, the guys who make this would probably argue that they're not making the environments a priority. I would argue they kind of should be because when you're in VR, that's what you're seeing. I'm not seeing the room I'm in right now. And the environments haven't changed in two or three years since I first looked at Create VR. Like for example, this one is still as useless as it was two or three years ago, right? The spindle, the selector spindle 
I still can't see it. Right, I brought that up and I mentioned that to Autodesk like th two years ago. I can't see the spindle. Why, if I'm selecting something, I can't see the selection window. <laughs> What's, what, what, what is this? Why is this still a thing? You can just about see the sphere there, but then everywhere else you can't see it. What, what, what good's that? Absolute none. None whatsoever. Uh, but the rest of them, they're just sure, right? You know, whatever. It's nothing, nothing of any note, a particular note. It would be nice to have a few more aesthetically pleasing environments. If you're going to spend most of your day in VR designing, it would be nice to have a more aesthetically pleasing environment to do it in. It just makes your job nicer. That's why people have nice offices, right? People spend a lot of money. There's a lot of work and a lot of science goes into making office environments pleasant for their for employees, right? There's a reason for that. Do you know what I mean? And this is the equivalent. So yeah, I think a little bit more effort needs to go to the environments just to make that a bit. Yeah, like this one's just. Oh, this just makes you feel like you're you're in a in a not a dream, a nightmare, just a never ending plane of nothing. You've just been you've just been dropped onto planet Zoig, and you know, like which way do you go? There's everywhere you look. There's just nothing for miles. <laughs> you're just left on your own to fend for yourself. <laughs> there's no help anywhere. You're shouting into the void. No one can hear your screams. <laughs> that's what this feels like. Oh, <laughs> oh never mind. But uh, anyway, that's so. Those are the environments. The rest of it's pretty standard from uh, two or three years ago. The sub DS stuff's brand new, which is a, obviously a huge part of design. The rest of the surfaces and the curves. Not much has changed there. That's all pretty consistent from a couple of years ago. There may be a couple of bits and pieces in here that's new. I haven't investigated and uh, interrogated that much, but uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, conceptual design in Create VR, wireless, tethered, untethered, I should say. Now a possibility. And you can chuck that back into Maya. The fact that this is now an application of Maya makes this available to a massively wider demographic who are going to appreciate this and use this on a much wider scale and probably will have bigger demands from Autodesk as a result. So there you go, Autodesk, put it on your desktop app for the love of God, take it off your, that stupid app store and put it in your desktop app. So more people know it's there, unless that's your intention, I don't know. But there you go, create VR. If you found this useful and you're gonna use this, drop the channel a sub because I do other stuff like this. Check out the back catalog for uh, related bits and pieces if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, mixed bag is what I'd say my channel's all about. And uh, if you found it just mildly entertaining, drop the channel, uh, drop the video a like. And I'll see you in the next one. That's all I've got. Toodles.